Hi guys, Ali Duzette here, and today I wanted to tell you about an experience that I had a little while ago. This was maybe two weeks ago, um, but it's been on my mind to tell you it. I actually recorded a whole video about it and then discovered afterwards that I never did. I didn't click the record button, so I talked to you about it for a whole hour, but it didn't count, so dang it, but it's going to count now. So, um, so... You know, I, like you, am on my own healing journey, and I have my own set of stuff that I am working on all the time. And ever since I discovered this kind of work about nine years ago, I've been very proactive about it. And when I first got started, the only person I had to practice on was myself. And so I would be doing healing work on myself for like hours and hours a day. I mean, like six hours a day, more than that. Any spare minute, I'd be working on myself, you know, but guess what? We're all kind of bottomless pits of issues, you know? And so we work, 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 and then we have more to do. And the good news about that, there's a really great article out there in this world called Mormonism and the 100th Monkey. You don't have to be Mormon to read it. But um, that is the article that I found when I first got started with my work um, as I was trying to figure out, you know, the gospel and, you know, intuitive healing, all of the stuff. I found that article through a Google search, through a Google search. And the important thing that it talks about is called morphic fields. And the concept of morphic fields, it comes from the, from the 100th monkey, which is, you know, in the title of this article. And the idea of it is that these researchers went to this archipelago. They started researching all of the wildlife there and they would wash all of their fruit in water before they would eat it. And these monkeys would see the researchers doing that. And one by one, the monkey started to copy the researchers. One monkey copied, two monkeys copied, 15 monkeys copied. And then the monkeys started to copy those other monkeys. And so then it was 30 monkeys, 50 monkeys, 90 monkeys. But the thing that they noticed was that when it got to be 100 monkeys, you know, they, these researchers were going out from the island every day to research and they weren't washing their fruit when they were out and about. They were washing it at their base camp on this one island. But once it got to be 100 monkeys, all of the monkeys on the whole archipelago started washing their fruit. And so this is the concept of the 100, 100th monkey. The concept is that once you hit this tipping point, you know, this critical mass of whatever, um, it's kind of like whatever it is, the concept, whatever's happening, it like enters the universal unconscious and becomes accessible to everybody. And all of a sudden people are like, they have more access to whatever it is. And so a good example of this, they did some experiments with Morse code where they would have, you know, some people learning Morse code for the first time, some people learning a brand new code that nobody had ever learned before. And the people learning Morse code learned it much, much faster than the people who were learning a brand new code. Um, and so, but when they repeated the experience with the same code, the, the people learning the new code learned it faster than the first set. So basically every time one person does something, it makes it easier for everybody else that follows them to do the same thing. And I've noticed that in my own work, for example, with, um, you know, Kundalini Rise, okay? Kundalini Rise, Two million, two thousand years ago would take your entire life. Like you might do yoga every single day for 90 years and maybe you might raise your Kundalini. Um, 20 years ago, people were starting to raise their Kundalini and it might take a decade instead of, you know, 10 decades, you know? And when I, when my Kundalini rose, it took maybe six months. That was probably seven years ago or something like that. Now, you know, a kundalini can raise in minutes. It can raise in an hour, you know? And so, um, I, and I have a whole lecture about kundalini in um, the free offerings at alleydoesetclasses.com. If that's something that you're really interested in, go to alleydoesetclasses.com and go learn about kundalini. But anyway, the point is every time that somebody does something, it makes it easier for everybody else. So I mention it because I've been working really hard for all these years and I don't want you to get discouraged because... Um, I've been working really hard for all these years, and that means that you don't have to work as hard. You get, like, all of the work that I've done is now in that universal unconscious. It makes it that much easier for people to follow. You know, every time somebody is doing something, like, all the people that have ever done healing work before you, you get to benefit from that because it's all in this universal unconscious. You, your way is going to be easier and smoother. 
So just because I've worked really hard for lots of years does not mean that you have to work for lots and lots of years. It means that every single time any of us is doing any healing work on ourselves, it's making it easier, faster, more effective for everyone on the whole planet. Okay, so that's like really fun news. That has nothing to do with what I'm talking about. Kind of, um, because what I wanted to talk about was that, you know, I worked really hard, but I still have so much stuff that I need to work through. And I'm, I've am i been working through it very proactively lately. I mean, I always do, but lately it's felt like, ugh, I mean, it's just been the worst. And I just, it feels like a slog and it's been going on for months. I mean, I would say, I mean, certainly this entire calendar year, you know, and originating in the years before that. And of course, I've always had these problems. And now I'm just like really working hard to clear them for once and for all. And so anyway, this is the story that I needed to tell you. I was sitting at my piano and I haven't played the piano in months. I used to, I mean, I was like a very obsessive pianist or like I used to play quite a bit. And I don't really play that much right now, but I sat down at my piano as I was like working through my trauma. I was like, I just have to play the piano. My kids had the uh, children's songbook up. And so I kind of flipped through it and flipped open to uh, families can be together forever. I played it and I started to cry. And I just had this, I just started to cry to my ancestors. And I just said, guys, like, I cannot do this without you. Maybe I'm going to cry about it again. But I was just like, guys, like, I can't do this. The stuff that I have to clear out of myself is so big and so hard. Like, how can I possibly do this? Like, no human could do this alone. I can't do it. And I said, ancestors, I need you. And like, obviously, of course, I need like Jesus and God, of course. Yes. But I just thought, man, families can be together forever. Like, I need my ancestors. Like, I'm clearing ancestral junk. I'm clearing problems that did not originate with me. I'm clearing problems that have existed for thousands of years in my family line. And I, and I just thought, man, I need some help. Like <laughs> ancestors, please help me. Like I need your wisdom and I need your help. And what happened next, it was really interesting. I just, <clears throat> I heard them say, um, you are our most innocent one. <clears throat> You are, you are our most innocent one. And the message that came with it was basically to the effect of like, we can't really help you. Like, like you're the best that we got. Like you're our best hope. You know, like we could, we never figured this out. You know, you are the one that has to figure this out. And, but I've been meaning to tell it to you guys, because the thing is that this is not just a message for me. Right. I mean, and the first thing that I thought was like, oh, no, like if I'm the most innocent one, like we've got a problem. Like, I guess like I feel like I'm a good person. I've never done like any of like the big sins or something like that. You know, like I've been a good person for my life, you know, but even so I'm like, yeah, I know myself like I'm pretty good, but I'm not like perfect or something like that. Like mm, it makes me like a little bit nervous to think that I'm like the great hope for the family line. But then I realized that's true for all of us. We are here at this time and place because we are the best hope for the entire family line. All these thousands of years back, it is you. You are the most innocent one of your family line. You are the one. You are the great hope. You are the hope of your entire family line. And yes, I'm talking to you. You are the one. That's I like, please like drive it home. I want you to feel your ancestors there reminding you, yes, this is true. Like ask in your mind, like ancestors, is this true? Am I your greatest hope? Like, yes, the answer is yes, it is you. You are the greatest hope, just like I am the greatest hope because why? Why is this the case? Because first off, we, uh, whoever is born the latest carries the most trauma from all the way back, right? So we're alive right now. Therefore we are carrying all of the baggage from all the way back. But beyond that, um, you know, especially people that like, you know, you've read Deep Past Resolution, you know, you've been working through your stuff, like the kind of healing work that is available to do now has never been available forever. You know, like nowadays, you know, you can, you know, go read the emotion code and like go and clear some trapped emotions and you can clear them for yourself, clear them for your ancestors. Guess what? Your ancestors could never do that, you know, and or like Deep Past Resolution, right? Working with pre-earth trauma, 
you know, guess what? Like if you have done any of that, like guaranteed you're like head and shoulders above, like you are going way faster than any of your ancestors ever did because they never had access to this information. You know, like maybe, you know, once in a blue moon, somebody would show up and like realize it and have all of this information come into them. And guess what? They would probably be, I don't know, like killed for it, you know, um, accused of heresy and like, you know, off with their head or something. So we really live in a really interesting time. I mean, like right now, we really do. The past 10 years, past five years, like right this minute, we, you and me, we are living in a crazy time where we have the ability to clear so much trauma, false belief programming. Um, I mean, geez, just every kind of weird energy issue, the curses that have traveled down your family line, curses are real. It's in the Bible. You know, when family members mess up, the curse of that follows down through the generations. And unless somebody breaks that curse for you, it's just going to hang out there for generations. So like start praying now that God will show you where your family line has been cursed, how to change it, you know, how to get out of it, what you need to do to shift it. This is the time to ask that and start making a real difference with your family line. Um, But we can, we can. And the thing is now, you know, and like, Look how great it is. We have YouTube. Like we can have this conversation over the internet, which was never possible before. Like maybe the isolated weirdo would figure this stuff out and start working on it. And if they told anybody again, like off with their head. And now we can have an open conversation with about this over the internet, right? We can be educating each other and learning all this stuff and applying it and like making this big difference. And when we do that, we're not just blessing ourselves. And we're not even just blessing our ancestors, we're adding it to this morphic field and making it easier for everyone else who isn't awake yet, who isn't even trying yet, who doesn't even know what they're doing yet. So anyway, that is the thing that I wanted to tell you is um, that's what happened to me. And, but the thing is, it's also happening to you. You are the most innocent one. Like you are the great hope for your ancestors. And so I wanted to let you know about that. I guess it would be irresponsible not to mention my books really fast that I have out right now that are helpful in this arena. So just really quick, I'll just share them very fast. This is my Amazon author page. I have nine books out. This one just came out and I really recommend it to everybody who cares about, you know, getting answers. But um, this is the one, Healing Your Ancestors. And all of these belief workbooks are just really helpful. And Deep Past Resolution, that's what I really wanted to talk about. This is like pre-Earth stuff so I mean I say it's so good it's because it's my favorite book I ever wrote I'm like I still love it I'm like still crazy about this book Ugh, I love all my books but this is my very favorite one but um there are tools now that are available to to make it so that you can start shifting yourself your family line and also the entire planet thanks to morphic fields and so that's it. That's all I had to say. Okay. I love you guys a lot. Thank you for listening. Go forth. Work on healing yourself. You can do it, guys. I just love you so much. I'll talk to you later. Bye.